One of my favorite things to do is to bake. I am pretty big into sweets, so I need to put a little caveat in here for you if you are a baker as well. All of the baked goods have oil in them. They also typically have eggs. You need to make sure that you're recording that you're eating the egg and that you're recording that you're eating the oil because while you could have three packets a day and three packets would equal three baked goods, that's three teaspoons of oil and you need to be very careful about it because it's very easy to forget that that oil is in them. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm adding the chocolate caramel mug cake to my bowl. And in baking, one of the things that you need to remember is that you always incorporate the dry ingredients together first. So to the chocolate caramel mug cake, I'm going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon. And I really like my cinnamon, so make sure I get that full teaspoon in there. Those are the two dry ingredients in this particular recipe. So I'm put this off to the side. To incorporate it, you take a whisk and you make sure you mix it so that it's all juju together. Okay, so the reason that you whisk the ingredients together, the dry ingredients together, and make sure that they're incorporated is if you are adding baking soda, or I'm sorry, baking powder, you have to make sure that it is fully incorporated into the dry ingredients or you're going to have flat or hard baked goods, not tasty. So I went ahead and I whisked. This case, I have just cinnamon and my chocolate caramel mug cake. And now we're gonna add the wet ingredients. So for baked goods, it, if it requires olive oil, something to note, olive oil has kind of a more savory taste to it. They make flavored olive oils. This one is natural butter. There is absolutely no butter in it. Um, but it does have just a hint of a taste that stops it from tasting savory and gives it more of a baked good quality. The other option that you have is that you can use grapeseed oil, which will give it a lighter texture and taste compared to regular olive oil. For this, remember, one teaspoon of olive oil. So this recipe calls for one tablespoon of milk. Instead of using milk, what I do is I use the vanilla drink mix. Here's my tablespoon marker, and I pour it in. Two tablespoons of Walden Farms chocolate syrup. You also have the ability to add instead two tablespoons of the caramel syrup, depending on the flavor that you like to give. It's a chocolate brownie. I want chocolate syrup. Okay. And then we're also going to add two tablespoons of liquid egg whites. I tend to use the one that is best of egg. This particular recipe calls for an additional teaspoon of a fudge flavoring. I don't happen to have that. I use vanilla and I make sure that I get the no sugar kind. Read the labels. There's going to be a lot of them that say no sugar. Typically pure vanilla extract doesn't have any sugar. Just read the label. One teaspoon, vanilla. From here, you incorporate together. When you're incorporating things together like this, you want to do it until it's just mixed together. You don't want to overbeat it because it'll get hard and flat that way as well. So we're just going to get that together. For this recipe, I'm actually going to make it like a cake instead of like a brownie because sometimes I like to have a cake. I save a little bit of my chocolate pudding from different recipes. I mix it with a little bit of water and use it as frosting. In this case, I'll probably eat it without anything else on it. So I have pre-sprayed with 
Pam or cooking spray, a quick release small cake pan. This is typically three to four inches long. I've put it on a baking sheet and the reason to put it on the baking sheet is that the pan goes through the holes in the bottom and will get all over your oven. So if you put it on a baking sheet and you're going to be using something on the baking sheet to block it, I make sure you have parchment paper. I had somebody tell me that they put wax paper and the wax paper melted in the oven and ruined their pan. So please make sure you're using parchment paper. Take your batter and pour it into your cake pan. You can also use a muffin. Do not use muffin tin wrappers because they will stick. Just make sure you spray it with a little bit of cooking spray and you'll be fine. You can use a square pan, you can use a rectangle, you can use the donut pans, you can use the brownie pans. There's lots of different ways to do this. And that's it. It fills about a third of the pan up and it will rise. I'm going to put this in the oven at 350 degrees. Depending on the size pan that you're going to use will determine how long you're going to cook it. If you're using it in muffin tins and you're making two muffins, you're going to cook for about 12 minutes. Mine's a little bit denser because I'm making a single cake and I'm going to put it in for 14 minutes. That is your chocolate chip brownie that's been made into a cake. And if I wanted to, I could frost it. Although this case, I might eat it without the frosting. One thing to note about this particular cake is that it is actually better the next day. So here we go. Yum. Mmm, so moist. Clearly I talk with my mouth full. This is super moist. Oh my goodness. Wow. Chocolatey. It's almost like, it's almost like fudgy, chocolatey. Because I've had the caramel mug cake. So you can make the caramel mug cake just as a mug cake in the microwave, super fast, water, and, and the mug cake. Um, you can also make the giant chocolate chip cookies with the caramel oh, chocolate mug right. cake. Yeah, this so is an incredibly versatile product. This 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 product here is it's a non-restricted product. The caramel mug cake. It's 18 grams of protein and 160 calories, and it is very versatile. It it I guess goes di different things you can do with it. Um, but sometimes I just make this for like a snack, maybe on a day when I'm not doing restricteds, I'll do a caramel mug cake as my snack and it's warm and gooey and yummy. And I pour some Walden Farms chocolate syrup on it. Mm -mm. I, and I've been known to take some additional, just like a tablespoon of the chocolate pudding. If I'm going to have it for a different time, okay. add a little bit of water and frost my cake. Do you ever use the Walden Farms marshmallow cream? Do you ever do that? Yes, I've okay. actually beat the um, the chocolate pudding, the Walden Farm marshmallow cream, and a little bit of the caramel sauce, and use that as frosting too. Ooh, wow! Incredible See? options. <laughs> so this is dessert, people. So say that it's your birthday, it's somebody else's birthday. Bring this with you. Enjoy it. Do your own thing and be proud of it. Don't let people peer pressure you into having, you know, uncle's birthday cake or it's a family reunion so you have to try grandma's carrot cake. Say, you know what, I'm going to be off my protocol in October and I'm going to have a big huge piece of cake with you then, but today I'm going to have this cake because this is yummy. This I will, is as good as any cake. I will tell you that in maintenance, I actually prefer this to, to the cake to the regular cake oh. and you're not going to get bloated from all that white flour and sugar and everything else mm -hmm. so enjoy